Welcome back. Today we're going to tie in the wet fly world one of my favorite flies ever. On this river, on the Madison, I would say probably, it accounts for probably 70% of my fish. And even though it's a wet fly, I fish this thing behind my dries almost always. I, I almost always have, uh, unless it's a real active part of the emergence or something like that, anything in the evening for sure, I'm going to have this fly behind my adult dry, no matter what. And as it gets dark, for sure, you've got to have this fly on. A lot of your caddis are divers. Some caddis, probably well over 50% are either divers or they go down, crawl to the bottom, and they're just, they go down to lay their eggs. And so, and then you've got this, you've got the, the dippers, you know, ones that lay on the water. There's still a possibility for that fly, that fly not to get back off the water and fly away. And, and by the way, a lot of these are multiple brood things. You know, caddis aren't like mayflies that just come down and, and they're dead. They can do two, three weeks and, and multiples uh, egg lanes. And so they crawl down or drive down or whatever they do, they still have to get back out. And so they go down to lay their eggs. You still got to come back and get out, crawl on the bottom, whatever. There is a lot of egg laying process that's happening underneath the water that you're not seeing and just seeing that few bugs on the surface. And so this fly, I, I don't know, I, this fly, I came up with this thing about, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago. I can't remember to tell you the truth. But like I said, it is, it's accounted for most of my fly, my fish. And when I, on this river in particular, and this river's really, this is the 50 mile riffle. It's just moving, right? It's always going. And you look for those little soft spots when you're fishing at night, uh, in the evening or whenever, you're just looking, when you're looking to dry fly fish, and I usually run this thing about six inches behind my adult. And the, the embarrassing part of this is, is that I probably, you know, probably 90 per plus percent, you don't even know you've got, it just boom, takes off, right? But I'll take that, <laughs> that's fine with me. I just, you know, you watch your adult, you watch what you can, and then you just kind of, you know, keep feeling because they're gonna, they're gonna take this under the water. There's no way for you to see it, but it's a real code cracker for if you're getting, perplexed by your caddis hatch and I'll put this up here and I'll you know we'll tie it obviously but you can see and I put a little green egg sac on it I'm not sure they can even see that at night but it it makes me feel good uh, a small body is that good you're right in there uh, you know a, a brighter wing you know I tie this it's either going to be a, a, a gray a, a, a really light gray and this one I'm going to use the, the white stuff and you don't have to have, this is a commercial tie. It's a little bit, maybe a little bit overdressed, but not bad. It's, not, it's pretty good, actually. And then I'm going to have just a hackle on it. And I'm going to use uh, uh, partridge because that's what I've always used. And I'm going to show you two ways to set your partridge. But, you know, I'm going to wrap it. And generally speaking, the hackle is going to be a little long. And because uh, Hungarian partridge is just, it, even the really small, small stuff still pretty long. And it's usually, and I'm gonna do this on a 14. You can do 16 and 18. It's gonna be easier to put the wings or the, the hackle on the way I'll show you the second way, but I'm gonna palmer this one traditionally. And so I've got, and, and this is just kind of a good segue for your hook thing. I'm gonna do this one on 1130. And if you read this, it's gonna say one extra short, one extra fine. And then I've got these 202, the U202 umquas, which are basically taking the space of uh, diarikis, the ones we used to use. Uh, and this is a one extra stout or strong, which means this hook is going to sink a little bit, right? So if you, whatever one, if you are tying your flies, and if you, if you look at, and here's another one, by the way, this is the Fulling Mills, this is the, the barbless style, and this, this hook is super light. This is a one extra fine. You, in the European tradition, of, you know, in, the Ameri in America, we don't do it as much, but in the European traditions, you, when you watch the lake, especially the lake people, everything has to do with the gauge of the hook. We, we kind of just buy a fly. And if you're tying this, if you want it to be in the film, I'm going to do this one on a one extra, or on a, a one extra fine, and I'm going to use a light wire hook. I don't really, you know, I'm not trying to get the fly down, but if you wanted the fly to go down a little bit, just go to the one extra heavy, and, you know, it's the same, it's just a little bit thicker hook. And so this, you know, that fly might go down just, 
maybe two inches, three inches more than the other one. You're, these are short drifts. You know, you know you're, you're throwing a dry fly. How I'm fishing it. And if I was going traditional wet fly, if I was going to throw this, swing it, whatever, I would probably go strictly to the heavier wire wire hooks. And so, but on this one, I'm gonna I fish it behind my dry. I'm predominantly wanting to see the fish eat, and and so it's this is just a bonus pack here in the way I'm fishing it uh, that I've been talking about. And so I'm using an extra, one extra five. So I'm going to do this one. Uh, if you've seen my, on my wet flies, I like to use burgundy thread. I, I don't know why. I don't really think it makes any difference. I just, I've been doing it so long that I, I, I do. It's as it's, it's Danville 6 up. Um, what else we got there? We got the body and the, I'm going to use super fine on this. Even though it's a wet fly, uh, I'm, I'm using, you know, super fine just because the colors are what I like. And if you want to just shag it up a little bit and not have it, you know, you want a little more wet fly style, that's fine. It wouldn't matter. I kind of like the fact that this, the reason I did it was that I like the egg sac to be very pronounced. I like it really bright and, you know, in their face. I don't want it to become like when I use a shaggy body, if I use some, some other sort of wet fly dubbing, I don't get those tight breaks. I'm going to have an egg sac, I'm going to have a body, and then I'm going to have everything else. And then, like I said, uh, this is the uh, emergent sparkle yarn. I've been using this on my uh, using this on my spinner wings and stuff like that. And I like that. I like how sparkly it is. And and my my thought process is that on that is that it's even though it's evening, there's a little bit of reflection to the wing. They're, you know, they're, if they're diving down, that wing's back there. So a little bit of just a little bit of sparkle to it. And so other than that, that's all. Oh. I'm going to use Hungarian partridge for the, the hackle. So, as you can see on this close-up here of this fly, we're going to have, it's pretty pretty straightforward, pretty basic. I need to have a spot for my hackle to tie in. I need to be able to put my wing. I need to put my uh, hackle in. So I leave a little bit of a space there, about three times what a head would be. And... Uh, so I've got I've got room to tie and still be able to finish the head. So first things first, I'm gonna come back here and I'm gonna put a half hitch here just so I I don't lose track of where I'm gonna be. I'm gonna put my egg sac back here, and again I want this very pronounced. And as you're gonna see, I don't know if you can see that or not, but I'm gonna have the chartreuse um, this color right here for the egg sac. This really bright green on the I, I do. I pretty much put the green egg sac on almost all of them, uh, even on the Mother's Day and some of those that are aren't quite as bright. But it's just, it, I'm not sure they really can. I just think they. I think they can see the egg sac, but uh, I don't think you have to, you know, exactly match it. Well, that's getting stuck in there. Got a bad dubbing going. I had a big chunk in that opponent. So. Uh, forgot I was using wax thread there. I got so used to using, I use GSP so much, I use that Roman Mauser stuff so much anymore that uh, I get, this is a wax thread and I, I kind of put it on there pretty tight. So as you can see, and you've, you've, you've heard me talk about this, if, if you've watched any other video, I, I use a really sparse amount. I was amazed the other day when I saw this that you could actually see this on film. I can't see the shit or the stuff, excuse me. Uh, but on the film, we could see it. But if you can see, I've got it so broken up, it's floating right here, right? And I can I can make it do real light. What that tells you is that the fibers, shit, now it's going all over the place. The fibers are really broke up and loose. And so what that allows me to do is get every fiber to wrap around the thread and not have a gob. And so I'll get this really tight, little egg sack back here and I'm not afraid to I'm gonna make that one just a tiny bit bigger uh, it doesn't matter to me if it's a little too big it's pretty pronounced when you look at it on the, the actual bug and again it's 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 a little like that target zone or not really but it's 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 just something that the, the fish sees you know it's like oh it's got an egg sack I don't know maybe Maybe it's all in my brain, but it just tells me that they see that that they've actually that the egg sac's actually there, and, may, and maybe it has nothing to do with it. I don't know. I like it there. So now I'm going to take a two-tone 
And this is when you do your tan or, you know, your different colors. And I do this fly for every caddis there is. I mean, for every size. And generally wet fly wise, you can go up one size, no matter, I don't care if it's an 18, you can go to a 16, almost always when that goes through the surface. So again, same thing with this, this body. And I want this body to be tight. I want them to have a, a very segmented body. I want it to, you know, be segmented, meaning the egg sac from the, from the body itself. And again, I'm going to just, I'm going to pick this so it's really, can you see that, Jeremy? Yes, okay. Yeah, so it's just really loose. I don't want a, a lot of it. And build up as you go. Don't try to do it all at once. Just take a little bit of it. And so every one of these fibers gets around it. And I want a good, distinct break between the body and the egg sac. And so I'm going to start tapering that so it's really thin at the beginning and then just kind of work forward, progressively getting slightly, slightly wider at the front. That should do, it's a short body. So I want a nice clean break there and then I'll build up as I go and have a nice taper. Give me a new box of dubbing, it's packed in there pretty tight. And what you'll see is when you use that, that light amount of dubbing, instead of, you'll see people, they just, they just want to rush through this. I use a light amount, and I never get a dog leg, meaning that the, th the dubbing goes off your, you know, you got your thread sitting here, and then all of a sudden if you're wrapped, you have too much, all of a sudden your dubbing will be over here. It's like, what the hell is that doing? Well, one, it's making a really soft body. It's going to come apart. And two, it's telling you that you didn't do that right. So now I've got that nice clean little body there and I'm going to have to put in a wing and a hackle here so I've got plenty of room to do that. I'm going to take this, this sparkle, emergent sparkle yarn and I'm, going to, I'm just going to cut a piece off here. And again, I'm, I'm not as used to using this. I just started using this stuff in the last year and I always used Antron or, or uh, Zelon, I mean. And then I and then MFC Z yarn I use that, and I, I like the way it builds up. But I just like this shine. And I'm using this I'm using this brighter stuff. Usually I'd use a gray, a light gray, but I like the shine. I like that you can see it on the on the camera. Uh, but you don't need a ton of this. You don't need it to. It's just it's going to get wet. It's going to get a little bit translucent. And it's just neat. It's just supposed to be a little bit of a glint, you know, a little shine in underneath there. So I'm not going to use a ton of it. And, and I mean, I've got maybe of, of this, how it's stranded, I've got maybe a half of a piece of that. I just kind of put it on here. I pull it. You can always cut it off, too. So just put it on here. Always leave it long. I've got one. I've got my pinch, my set, and my anchor. All right. You can fold it right over. I'm not gonna. You can you can fold that over too. I do that a lot on synthetic. If you're not, especially if you're using the GSP threads, it's not a bad idea to, to break this. And I'm so used to tying this fly, I'm not gonna do it. But if you're using those threads that don't have wax on and there's not really a lot of grip and you're you're just doing it, it's not a bad idea to fold these over and do that and leave it because you'll never it'll never fall out there, right? And just do like this. I don't have to do that because I'm going to tie it off, but, and I picked, but if you do it, just cut, you know, just take half as much wing because you're going to double it when you fold it over. I don't have to do it. I'm just going to cut this off. That scissor is getting dull. So now I've got a nice clean break right here uh, between the body and what we're going to have is our, our hackle. And I'm going to show you, so this is Hungarian partridge, one of the most versatile. This, you really, if you if you tie wet flies and you don't have one of these, you're really missing out. There's, they're they're, they're not really that expensive for what you get. You you will have. I've had this thing forever. This thing, I mean, it's kind of beat up at the end, but there is so much usable hackle in one of these things that people miss. They buy it for this stuff up here. I do my wing cases and and. Some of my drakes, I use this, uh, this wing covert right here. If you tie white gloved howdies, it's the best back. It's the best, uh, it's an Eastern mayfly, but uh, you can fold these over for wing cases. There's just so many uses for these things, it's crazy. 
Get into your bigger sizes. You can drop up into the tail. You want the you want a little bit longer hackle. I'm going to use the, the right off the neck right down here. These are the shortest ones, but like I said, they're still they're still not. You're not going to get a 20 out of one of these things. They're still going to be pretty long when you get into the usable part of the feather. Turn this crap off of here, and you get down into the tip where you can. Give me you. This is a pretty short one, but you can see it's still pretty long. I'm going to get one turn out of this, but this is a 14. So if I was trying to do an 18 or a 16, I'm going to I'm going to fight it for having a, you know shorter hackles. So I'm going to show you a, a way to do that. My buddy Skinny Steve Mock, uh, Skinny's a, a great tire. He's guided for us for well, he's out down on the south work nowadays, but uh, he guided for us for I think 15 years. He showed me this, it's a pretty handy trick. So, it's way faster than trying to mess with those hackles. These hackles are pretty light. So I'm just trying to get this tip out of here and I'm gonna pull that back. I'm gonna come in here and trim that off. And so now you can see what I've got left. I've got this little V-shaped thing like that. This is, now I'm gonna, this is just another way to do this before I go forward. So now I'm gonna come in here and I'm just gonna give this a nice loose wrap and I'm going to pull that forward just like that. And so, and you get to decide right now what you want for length. So if you wanted that to be longer, just pull in here and pull it back. So that's how long you want it. Set one and you pull it back right over top. Let them splay out. Get them all over the place. Boom. And you have perfect hackle. You can put any length you want like this. They're all the same length. You just cut them off in advance. Boom. There you are. So I'm going to do this one. Where do you go to? I'm going to take this particular one and tie it from the tip first. I'm going to, I'm going to wrap this one. We don't need all these big hackles back here. I'm just getting this pulled off to the side. And by the way, kind of like a lot of my, my flies and all my wet flies, I do not want short hackle on these. I want the hackles long. I, I want them to fold. And the reason you're using this Hungarian partridge is it's a soft tackle. It's, this, is, this, is, this is soft tackle. The, the actual flies is soft tackles are done with partridges. And so I want it to be longer. I don't want it to be really short right here. I don't want it to look like dry fly hackle. I want it to move. It's supposed to look like something underwater. So I'm going to tie this in. I got one set up. I have one set up there to use, and I don't know which one I grabbed. Okay, get him ready. I'm going to set this hackle underneath, just like we always do. One from right to left, one from left to right. I'm going to come in here right in front of it, two, and secure it. And then I do on my own, I don't think this is really that critical, but... On my own flies, I just put a little tiny base of, of dubbing down here. Give me you. I like to build my thoraxes just slightly bigger. So I'm gonna uh, should just give it a little bit of bulk right there. It's the same color. Go up to my head. You don't have to do that. I, I don't it's not really that necessary to put that on there. It just, I just, I'm so used to, I, you know, a couple of my mentor, Dave Ellis in particular, maybe the, in my opinion, maybe the greatest tire ever as far as proportions and setting things up. He just hounded about having your thorax. <laughs> That's why you hear me talk about it constantly because he was got it taught me an awful lot. And he was always big on proportions and he, he was an, an incredible tire, not was, is. And it just it just kind of stuck with me. I'm not going to use those because I've got plenty. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to go right over top of that. I'm going to make two turns and be done with it. Went right to the eye of the hook. They're pretty long. So I've got two turns in there. Broke him off. I'm going to come in here. Go right back over top of that base of that hackle. There's a little bit of dubbing in there. So I'm going to come back in here, give it just a nice clean little head. 
three turns. Semi's blowing his horn at the sheep out in the road. That always helps. Did you hear that? Idiots. Don't slow down, blow your horn at the sheep, and they'll all run away. Okay, so now I've got this hackle in here. I forgot, by the way, I forgot to trim that. I left that wing long. I like it to be right back to the end of the, the egg sac. And so now I've got my hackle in here. I've got maybe two or three more strands than I really wanted, and it's really tough. You just come in here and you pop them out. You just grab them. Just break them off. You know, better to have just a few more and have to pop them out right now, but it's not bad. You see how picky it is and it's all, it's all kind of loose. If you're looking at it and you just say, remember, there's six legs, right? Well, I got probably 15. If you want to pop those out, that's fine, but some of that is going to, some of what this hackle is going to do when it's laying back there is it's going to kind of encompass that thing. It's going to give a little bit of translucency. If you ever see these things when they're wet, they're, they're not all of them are going to stick out to the side. Some of them are going to wrap around your body, gives it kind of a cool effect. But if you look in here and you just say, well, I don't want quite as many. This is all, I mean, I don't fight trying to find this hackle and just and sit there and put it on, take it off, cut. I just come in here and I just pull them so they're tight. They break off right where I've got it tied in. If there's two or three really long ones in there, I cut them off. I mean, I, I break them off. It's not that hard. You know, if you, if you to sit there and try to find that exact hackle just small enough and, you know, get them just the right length. And again, I want them a little bit longer. This one, this is perfect for me. This would be exactly how long I'd want them. They're going to reach around. They're going to flow a little bit. The idea, you know, they're not, they're not under tension so much because they're dead drifting the way I'm fishing them. And so that's how I would do my own. At this point, you could give it a drop of head cement, just, you know, little drop if you could find your head cement. I don't know where mine's at, but boom, right there. You've got the egg sac, very pronounced. You've got this little tiny sparkle wing underneath there. You've got your legs that are gonna move a little bit and wrap a little bit around it. And they do kind of wrap their legs, by the way, when they're diving, they, they kind of wrap some of their legs back across their body. And you'll see them pushing with their wing a little bit and you'll see them swimming, but you, well, you won't see it. You'd have to, you'd have to, every daytime to see it, but anyway. That's the fly. Again, this probably counts for, I, I would say just roughly speaking, 70% of my evening caddis eats are going to come on this fly underwater behind an adult, uh, super close, you know, six, eight. I don't like to get too far away from the fly because I don't really know what's happening, but six, eight inches, nice pronounced egg sac. The rest of it's just the bug, what it is, just the body and the, and the legs, super simple to tie. Do it in two or three colors, two or three sizes, and this is a this is a real code cracker when you got a, a egg laying cat is going on. Hope that helped you out.